My name is uh, Kieran Ney. I'm 24 years old, uh, and I am from Colorado Springs, Colorado. I mean, growing up, I was not a particularly um, athletic kid or, or into sports or anything like that. I mean, I, my parents signed me up, but I was pretty bad. And um, most of my sort of, I guess, athletic experiences outside were always happening in the mountains on family hikes and things like that, um, you know, growing up in Colorado Springs. And I then, you know, kind of got into running and it was something that I was actually good at. And that really kind of changed the, the trajectory of my life in a lot of ways. And then I kind of started to discover this whole world of trail running where these two loves of mine are kind of melded together. And I also discovered that I was relatively good at it. I grew up in like Monument, Palmer Lake, so sort of north of the Springs and the trail system back there is completely unmarked and there was a, a group of a couple of us who sort of explored different areas and we kind of inform one another and you build out this mental map of kind of these really cool home trails that, that no one else really knows about. And the trail running community in Colorado Springs is, is really exceptional. Um, you know, I think it's pretty underrated as a mountain town. Like people talk about Boulder, or, you know, even Denver and Fort Collins and the Springs that I would argue is more versatile and, and kind of better than all of those places for, for trail running in terms of what you have access to. Um, so, you know, for me that kind of crystallizes itself in going back to Pikes Peak almost every year, any opportunity that I can. Um, you know, great hometown race, iconic, world class, and, you know, I grew up looking up at that mountain every single day. And so every time I'm home, I, I'm like, wow, yeah, like we go race up and down that. It's really cool. And it's cool that there's a whole culture in Colorado Springs around that, you know. Yes. Very nice. T tenth plate. <laughs> It's this place where I get to kind of incorporate some feeling of adventure and space into my daily life um, in a way that is really valuable. And the older I've gotten, the more I've appreciated that, you know, time for me in almost kind of like a meditative sense. And then getting to connect to the landscapes that I live in, um, which has been something that I, I think the older I've gotten, it's become more about that and more about the places that I'm in and the things that I get to experience in a day. Um, and running is just sort of the medium that allows me to do that the most efficiently. It's not always every day. Um, and there's definitely days where it's like, you do have to also have the, the discipline and the honesty to look at how you're feeling and be like, this actually isn't productive to do this today. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I've usually had more trouble kind of holding back than going for it because it really is something that I love. Um, and it really is usually the best part of my day. You know, it's a moment where I have all this space and time to think about things or think about nothing at all. And, you know, I get to build this kind of adventure into my daily life. And so, you know, it's like, there's a level of discipline to it. There are moments where you don't want to do it and you make yourself do it. But I think that it doesn't, you know, for the most part, it shouldn't be something that's just like complete suffering all the time. Like, like there's a lot of value in choosing that suffering, but it should also add value to your life. And I'm lucky, I think, to be in a place where I'm excited to go out and do it. Um, and I definitely know if it's like something where it's like, I feel like doing it and I should do it and I wanna do it and I don't do it, I'm gonna feel terrible. Um, and so at this point, you know, I've been running almost every day for almost 10 years. And so it's like, it's so habitual at this point that, you know, when I take a forced week off or something like that, like, you know, it's, it's how do I keep myself in the door, not, not, not necessarily like how do I push myself to go out. Sometimes I wanna go home and be done and just, you know, hang them up and not go out. But other times I feel this wonderful connection to myself and the places that I love and everything about those landscapes. Like you get to be on the landscape. And so sometimes, and, and more often than, than not, I would say there's this feeling of really, at least once in a run, really just being fully in a moment in a place that I really love. Um, and that is honestly a big piece of what kind of keeps me coming back to it. Um, it's that sense of, you know, flow and everything kind of happening in that moment as it needs to happen. And there are, 
you know, there always are all the other problems going on in my life, but for those moments, those things are not front of mind and I'm not even thinking about them. And I always come back from a moment like that um, with a bit of a different perspective about kind of like, you know, feeling a little more awake in my own life um, and in how I'm interacting with things. And, and, and that's, you know, hugely valuable. Injuries are a part of the sport, as you know. As you know. Um, and I'd been pretty lucky for a long time. I you know, went about three years without anything that took me out for more than you know, a week or two. Um, and then I kind of got into a place where I was really um, pushing things, I think, a little more than I should have been and not necessarily listening to my body because I had this idea of the runner I had to be, which was not someone who was going to take time off for something that felt manageable. Until last summer, um, it kind of came to a head where the dysfunction in that foot from that plantar fasciitis um, led to, I think, some altered kind of biomechanics and I ended up breaking a bone in my big toe. Um, and then after that, I had to step away from running for, for a really long time, for about eight months. Um, and during that period of time, it really, you know, for better or for worse, running is a huge piece of who I am. It's a huge piece of my identity. It's a huge piece of my routine. And I had to figure out what it meant to let that go and potentially let it go at a competitive level, like a highly competitive level, maybe permanently. So, you know, it was a really long process, um, but it does kind of finally feel now about, you know, over a year on, um, like it's behind me, um, which I feel incredibly lucky. It's the, the injury I had is not something you always get a second chance with. There's some of the, our men's favorites. So yeah, so uh, people to keep your eye on, right? Give shout outs to Kiernan Ney, who I think has been ninth here year after year, looking to move up from that position. Patty O'Leary had a... You know, I raced a bit this year. I was, I started running, you know, a minute of running, a minute of walking for 10 minutes in February. I just got back to what I would consider a normal training week, maybe a month ago. Um, so, you know, that's a, like a seven month, um, eight month process and so I went to a lot of races where you know in the past I have been very competitive and then was not very competitive this year um, and so for me it was a lot of it was just coming back into the place and being okay with failing at it um, because it you know it, it was not up to the level that I that I had been at in the past but really like for me this season was about accepting where I am right now and that I'm healthy where I am right now and that that's a place that I can build off of and that's really exciting. And so, you know, I went out to Broken Arrow, didn't do particularly well. It was, you know, first race back, hardly running at all. And then I went out to Kendall Mountain and did a little bit better. And then I went to Pikes Peak and did a little bit better. And Pikes Peak was really kind of the, the big moment this year where it was like, okay, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of back. You know, I was, ran a time that I ran a few years ago it wasn't particularly fast. I think it was actually the slowest descent I've ever run, but I was super emotional the whole time. I remember kind of being in the mix, running with people who I who used to be my peers in the sport and feeling like, oh gosh, like, you know, I'm back in this and just feeling really, you know, it was a very, I was a super emotional race. I was like, you know, tearing up like halfway through the race, which was kind of unexpected. And it was this feeling of just being lifted by all the people who have, you know, invested in me in the sport and cared about it and, you know, shown shown their love through it. And then also feeling like, you know, I I trusted my love in this enough to let it go. And it came back. And it came back in a way that I didn't necessarily expect it to. I think I always tell myself when I'm in it, it's like, this is exactly what you came here for. Um, and I used to, I was actually a very, as a child, super pain averse, like didn't want to hurt anytime like like hated it um, and I don't really know what changed for me but I think now it's like I I recognize in racing and in competing with other people who are really there to bring the best out of themselves and out of you you access a level of effort and hurt and emotion and you know kind of power that you can't get alone you ha you can only get it in competition with other people like other people pull that out of you um, and so now it's like when I race, I'm so excited to get to that place where you make that decision, right? Where it's like, am I going to kind of back off of this? 
or am I just gonna throw everything I have into it? And you really don't get to make that choice in training. It's, it's very difficult to access that place. And racing and racing against good competition, you get that moment where everything hurts and you get to, you know, that question gets posed again, like are you, are you gonna throw everything you have at this? The most valuable experiences I've had in this sport have been usually where I have fallen short of a goal or, you know, been completely outdone by an opponent or just, you know, totally had it kind of blow up in my face. Um, but in continuing to push towards those things, that's where all the growth happens, right? Like, I've won a handful of like small races by big margins and, and those are fun, but you don't learn much from it. You know, the most valuable experiences for me have been those, you know, seventh, ninth, 15th place finishes in big competitive races. Failure is gonna be a scary thing and something that you don't want to encounter. But if you have all these other things in your life and you're free to try and you're free to succeed and you're free to fail, that's where you actually grow and learn and become the person through those experiences. Um, and so, you know, I would encourage my younger self, and, and I think that I did, but anyone else who's coming up in the sport, go to all the big races, lose all the time, learn from it, and, you know, five years down the road, all of a sudden you're this person with all this experience that you wouldn't have ever had if you had just been, you know, playing it safe the entire time.